Green Rising, my friends. Hello there. How are you? I know you're doing great. For those who are with me, brand new. Hi. <laughs> A little bit that went across. We'll see. Um, still early in the week. Things are, uh, you know, when you endeavor on a project such as this, um, putting yourself out there, uh, you risk alienating people and angering. So, you know, for the most part, try to avoid unnecessary stress in my life. Besides just the idea of trying to help people see some things that I think I see uh, when I read or come across things. But, well, long and short of it, I'm just going to say what I'm thinking. There appears to be a new variant and coming out of South Africa that may be more, even more infectious than the Delta variant. And you don't know what I know or me or anything, and take what I say, but let's just hope we are able to not have to deal with this in a bad way here in this country is very horrible um, in some parts. And I mean, around the world has just been is, is a pandemic. What you going to say? You know, you, you read about this and then to have lived through those times as is, is been at the same time, it's fascinating and, and, and horrific at the same time. So, all I can say is let's pray that this South African variant, whatever letter it gets in the Greek alphabet, um, that we are able to get a handle on this sooner rather than later. And with that said, to be more positive, what about that positivity here? And that is if there's someone in your life that you love, admire, respect, feel good about and you want to make them feel good in their day write something nice about them in the comment section and say hey go go down there and look at this video i wrote something about you is if you can find it you got to look for a while but here try and <laughs> give them a boost in their day now let us jump into it we don't have much to discuss not slow so much slow news time is just the uh world's attention are on the United States completely withdrawn out of Afghanistan appears to be kind of the main focus. And, you know, there's this uh, hurricane in the United States right now that's causing a lot of damage and the power is out. Appears to be the entirety of New Orleans. So keep all those in your prayers and everybody who could just need a little extra um, assistance on their day to day. And that may just be somebody who even close by you. Who knows? But Bitcoin institutional investors not slowing down on Bitcoin. Here's how much they own. Now we're going to get to some of the nitty gritty on who owns what. And I can't even see where the thing to X out of that, but it's no biggie. Bitcoin investment by institutions is now a common occurrence. This was not so in previous years. Who are you telling? Institutional investors have been investing in cryptos for a while, but mostly at a conversation rate. 2020 changed all of that. The bull that started in 2020 saw more institutional money coming into the market. Blah, blah, blah. Grayscale, micro strategy, blah, blah. We all know the, well, maybe some everybody doesn't know the main characters in the, in the game, so I won't speak as if, but we'll go through some of it. <clears throat> it appears that institutional investors now own almost 8% of the total supply of Bitcoin. Top holders now have hundreds of thousands of Bitcoin in their care. Oh, this person writing this article saying Bitcoins. <laughs> Remember to bash my head into the screen. The plural of Bitcoin is Bitcoin, not Bitcoins. It makes you sound as if you don't know what you're talking about. But, you know, hey, anyone can do research and start. But that's where you know someone has superficial versus a deep knowledge. Institutional, apparently from 
Tuna from Bitcoin Treasuries put the total. So I don't know. Got to look up who Bitcoin Treasuries and how they get their information. I don't know if it's probably one of those chain analysis companies. But total Bitcoin held by institutional investors at 1.6 million Bitcoin, which is 7.91% of the current supply. But remember, we talked about how a third of the supply may be lost. So what supply? The mathematical supply that's been created since bitcoin has been uh created years ago and we didn't even discuss in satoshi nakamoto and my theory is darpa defense advanced research projects agency united states government but that's a discussion for another time I have to get to well, my. I always blame. I'm gonna say blame Darpa, but if, hey, you gonna see some incredible uh, th thought process stuff. Yeah, that's where you go to first to see if they was on top of it. Um, but uh, blah, 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 let's get to who got what. Sixty days. So a total of sixty one institutional investors. Some some have as low as two. Others have hundreds of thousands. Grayscale has the most at six hundred fifty four thousand eight hundred eighty five Bitcoin. Macro strategy, which is dope, a subsidiary of micro strategy under which Michael Saylor is the CEO has. I think they have more than this now, but it says one hundred and eight thousand nine hundred ninety one. Well, that may be close to accurate, but, you know, relatively ballpark figures at this point. But I like the way that they named the subsidiary, the, the subsidiary that holds the Bitcoin macro strategy. Like we think in long term with this dope. Dope. Now, this was fascinating. Bulgaria, the country holds 213,519 Bitcoin itself. Bulgaria trying to be the next, and it's going to be the big European power in some years. They read, they, they out here. They are out here. That's genius. Whoever in Bulgaria thought, well, I'm at the. I'm not sure if they're being ran by a totalitarian indi type individual. Yes, I don't want to give them too much praise before I, because at the moment, I can't remember when the last time I was thinking about, no, that's Belarus where that plane was forced to land, I want to say. That wasn't Bulgaria. So I have to go I have to see what, what's been happening in Bulgaria lately, uh, how they have known to, who, who thought there to come up on Bitcoin as such. But, you know, you know hey. So that's where we are with some institutional interest and in who has what. What are the hottest coins now? Some think it's not Bitcoin and, and Ethereum. Hottest coins now, now the Bitcoin and Ether alternatives. But everyone thinks that. Is, is it all season yet? Is the market going to behave similar, similarly to previous cycles? That's the question. Are we in a super cycle now? It's a lot of things that can be up for discussion. But it appears that, and we'll talk about some of it uh, uh, now and, and, and nextly uh, as well, but is it, is it alt season? It seems like it's been alt season for some months. So depending on what the alt is. And for those who don't know, alt season is, so Previously in the markets, markets when after Bitcoin had been uh, um, in existence and other cryptocurrency has been in existence long enough, there became, while difficult, and be careful with anyone who could tell you what's what, somewhat patterns that developed where you would see Bitcoin raise, other coins would go up with it. Bitcoin would then shoot up dramatically. And sometimes even the dominance would increase and drain even from the other coins. But then Bitcoin would top out and that all that money that was in Bitcoin would then flood into all these alts. And then they would have their uh, peaks just a little bit after the Bitcoin peak as Bitcoin was coming down. And so once you realize this, you realize, OK. And that's what I think is building. What I think where I think we're at right now, I think we're in the midst. Well, like I said. Things can be anything, but I think we're in the midst of a cycle where we're going to go up again, probably into December, maybe even to early of next year, more Bitcoin, then, I mean, go high. And then the other coins, it'll, it'll, then that happen again. Then it'll be the true alt season where Bitcoin, where everybody be just like 
everything. People on TV talking about it, making jokes. Bitcoin, Bitcoin. It'll seem like it's just inundating the world. And Ethereum and everything. Bitcoin will shoot through the roof. Everybody go nuts, go crazy. Then it'll be a crash, quote unquote, a correction. And while that's correcting, starting to come down, you will see some of these alts go shoof and go through to the moon. Uh, see, we're we not even thinking small like that. And I said there were Maxwell cylinders, there are O'Neill cylinders. Sorry, the space stations envisioned by the scientists and the physicists named O'Neill that um, could spin around having their own gravity and atmosphere and its entire ecosystem in space. So but anyway, O'Neill cylinders. We shoot past those as well. I don't know where we're gonna end up. We're just gonna be adrift to the edge of the universe and beyond. Multiverse, but not a madness of our own planning. <laughs> so what is popping now? FOMO remains alive and well in the cryptocurrency world with lesser known tokens outperforming again in the wake of recent rallies staged by industry leaders. Bitcoin, this person could call it Ether, but Okay, whatever. Cardano has doubled this month. More than double, but okay. Okay, I'm not going to argue every little thing. Becoming the lar third largest token. Binance is also up. A token named Avalanche has tripled. You know, just, uh, meanwhile, prices for... You know, this person barely knows anything about cryptocurrency, but it's fine. Prices for digital photos of rocks with laser eyes and cartoon depictions of cute animals are going gangbuster, sometimes quadrupling in a matter of days. Blah, blah, blah. People don't know what's causing the consensus of why this happened. Is it that there's uh, low interest rates and money is, quote unquote, cheap out there? Washed in cash or just people have more risk tolerance because of that. This person calls it a generational buy-in moment and cites a confluence of events, including rock bottom interest rates worldwide, as well as massive fiscal stimulus efforts that delivered checks to many people during the pandemic. This talked about how the people, well, 15 percent of Americans who received the first two STEMI checks invested part of all that money. And about half of this group invested specifically in cryptocurrencies. So the United States government financed the current boom in the crypto cycle via stimmies let's give it up for stimmies <laughs> and i'm over here mad i didn't even get a stimulus check i mean not mad i mean hey it is what it is or any of them quite honestly but you know Uh, blah blah blah. Let's get to what they're saying. The oh, I'll okay. go. They're just talking about the uh, different, um, just you know, yeah, basically Cardano, Avalanche, Dogecoin, just repeating that. You know, they're saying, Hey, it seems like this stuff is making money, but what are considered top 10 NFT protocols and tokens? Now, we can argue about this, but. They're going by uh, market cap. So how is she going to argue? I guess if you, you argue if you want, but, you know, market cap is kind of hard, hard to argue against. Sandbox, we're not going to go through all these. Wax, Digibyte, Flow, Decentraland, Engine Coin, Chili's, Tezos. You know, we fan as the Tezos. It appears. It seems like they're doing well. and <laughs> So, hey, Tezos is... Um, I guess we're fans of almost all these products, as long as they're not scams. If somebody's not trying to scam but get somebody money and really trying to figure out a way to push along this technology to see how it's going to improve our lives as a, as a society, I, I, you know, I had no problems with nobody. Released in September 2014, it is a blockchain network that is based on smart contracts. Those who hold XTZ are allowed to vote on a network-related proposal, such as protocol upgrades, just saying how XTZ increased in price. It's saying now currently traded at $4.16. See, and this was written some days ago. It's, it's at five sixty dollars now. Everything is kind of down now. And I didn't want to go over here and look at it because it's, it's, it's not pretty times. ETH was having a pretty good day, though. ETH was having a pretty good, good day. Cardano, but they have dropped off some. Um, what was he talking about? Tezos? 
Tezos have fell as well down to five twenty. It was up to six dollars yesterday, so it's gone down by quite a bit in the past twenty four hours. But still more than a dollar than this person when they wrote this a couple of days ago. Now this one is nuts. Axie Infinity. I may be saying the Axie one part wrong. AXS. It's a video game that people have been playing on the blockchain, and it has increased by more than fifty thousand percent. 50 times in the past year. Like right here is an all-time low last November of 12 cents. And it has a high... Let me see where it's at. Um, Seventy-two bucks today, but so going up ten times would be to a dollar twenty. A hundred times would have been twelve dollars. And wow, that was more than fifty thousand times. The times five if it's twelve cents. And you go up to eighty something bucks, almost eighty. That's almost seven seventy. Um, that's almost seven seventy thousand seventy thousand percent. It's almost seventy times. Not quite. It's in the sixties, but close. So created in two thousand eighteen is a block chase. I'm sure I'm getting all the numbers and freaked out and wish I can time travel and go make go make some money. <sighs> is a blockchain-based trading battling game. Don't go out here gambling, people. Still, call, uh, dollar cost average. You know, if you got some spare beer money to throw and stuff, like Buddy said the other day, Doge was his beer money. If you got some, yeah, you you know, say I'm gonna not drink or eat something or some other expense I'm doing to save some money to buy some stuff. Yeah, the Axie Infinities. Yeah, you take them shots on that. But the money that you putting aside to plan for your future and you should pay yourself first and we'll talk about that that goes dollar cost average bitcoin ethereum and if you feel a little bit crazy throw a little bit in the cardano as well that's why i tell people hey, you know, some reason, hey, what should i do blah, 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 blah. i was just like look don't you got to do what you feel in your heart you got to do some research do your own research and I ain't your advisor. If I, I'm not saying all this stuff today and I ain't said that yet. No, I'm tripping. I'm not your advisor. I'm not your advisor. I made tacos for the boys today. I ain't your advisor. But oof, we could have went back to November and, and threw a bunch of money. Man, let me see. You could have threw 12 thousand would have got you about a hundred thousand <laughs> no yeah 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 about twelve thousand bucks say if you had twelve thousand this thing you even had twelve thousand you just had um you just had like i know i know that sounds crazy too twelve hundred dollars but for our purposes twelve hundred dollars and you bought ten thousand of axes and then it went up to eighty 83 bucks. I know I'm about to do this in my head because I've been messing up on here and I'm not going to embarrass myself. No more in front of y'all. I know it ain't nobody watching, but it's just me. But. Okay, yeah. If you just had $1,200, that I got you 830000 <laughs> Oh, If you had 12000 and you believed in this back then. Oh, eight million bucks. You would have got it. <laughs> well, you probably you probably sold that. <laughs> when it went just ten times to a dollar, so you'd be like, oh! not knowing it was gonna go up to eighty something. But this is blockchain. Hey, look, this is crypto. Some products you may I, I joke about. You know that you throw some little money at now, but there may be some you see and you you may find some that just three or four or five years now hit like crazy. So. It's very important to keep track of all your things in this. And we'll talk about that with operational security, about passwords, you, physical copies, digital copies, making sure that you have access to all your information at all time here. <sighs> Inspired by popular games like Pokemon, Taka, Tamagotchi has its own governance token called the Axie Infinity Shards. AXS has dropped more than 2% in the last days, currently trading over 70. Yeah, we said about 73, right? All-time high of 83. 
all time low of 12 cents and theta theta launched in march 2019 is a blockchain powered network that aims to decentralize video streaming data delivery and edge computing its token theta supports carrying governance tasks within the network theta has dropped more than seven percent in the last couple of days womp, womp, womp. currently trading over six dollars all-time high 15 all-time low of three cents so theta is also another one you could have made tremendous amounts of money Three gets you times 10, get you to 30 cents, times 100, get you to $3, almost four. Let's say it's about four cents. So times four gets you to 40 cents, times another 10, and 100 times get you to $4. Then it almost four times from that point. Yeah, you wonder why, yeah, yeah, okay, say you did pay, threw some money at that. And when it happened, so you threw... Four thousand dollars at Theta last March. When you saw it go down, after you said, "I love Theta. I know it's gonna be banging in the future. I'm gonna put four G's against that. Four G's against Theta, right? Not, not um, four hundred. You just put four thousand. You put four thousand. By April this year, you'd have about one point six, one point five nine. 1.59 staring at you from your 4,000. So you put 400, you got um, 150, about 160, 159,000. That's life changing money. 159,000? <sighs> At times in my life, man, $1,500 is life changing, let alone 15,000, let alone 150,000. Um, so the crypto market, keeping out these NFTs, they're going to blow. They're going to that that decent. So you see the pieces now you have the basic, you know, is this a money type idea between uh, Bitcoin and the other ones uh, for story value, for currencies, that argument, the Ethereum, the so the blockchains was smart contract functionalities like ethereum cardano tezos these ones here axi shards theta all of these that way now you can have nfts on there the non-fungible tokens which you know are are basically um i thought i did it Say what it is. Okay, yeah, I hear. It. I'm sorry. It, it had a, a bit of an int um, explanation. I didn't read it. Apart from, apart from cryptocurrencies and other digital, another digital asset that has grown and is growing popular among investors are NFTs or non fungible tokens. Fungible is anything that can be easily exchanged, but non fungible is something that has unique properties which makes it difficult to exchange, such as an original painting. In the digital crypto world, NFTs are seen as the digital answer to collectibles or one-of-a-kind assets, blah, 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 blah. So not only do you have these kind of like art collectibles on the blockchain as a revenue source or stream, but you also have um, smart contracts where, you know, sky's the limit on how, it could, you know, technically NFTs are smart contracts, but just in terms of businesses doing business with each other in ways in terms of uh, deeds for land, uh, shipping parts and, and verifying that they arrive via the blockchain and smart contracts and payment. That's a whole other revenue source in, in business stream. And then you have decentralized finance where you have banks and individuals that can borrow and loan money to each other and get paid interest. So that is why we talk about why cryptocurrencies will be here for such a, I'm just blabbering about cryptos today. Go break, not too much longer. Israeli scientists discover how to re reverse cell aging. Long and short of it, I'm not, it's a long article and I'm not gonna go too much in depth, but the humans, we create um, B cells and B cells producing bone marrow, then travel through the blood to see they explain everything like too much detail for, for just people trying to get to understand it. Lymph nodes and spleen are the way for pathogens to enter and then attack them. So basically B cells don't live long. They, especially younger in life, they, they get, they fight all these pathogens and turn into 
memory B cells, which live much longer, but then they inhibit the growth of new B cells coming in. So as a newer organism, human beings, as I mean, as a person is younger, they have a lot more of these younger B cells that are getting these pathogens and switching over into memory B cells to remember to fight them later on. But the process of that starts to make it harder to then take on newer pathogens as you get older. And that's why they think, you know, they were researching this and figuring this all out when they were um, because of COVID of COVID and trying to figure out why older people are more susceptible. There's just one way, you know, the body has its own built in, you know, I won't say self destruct mechanism, but what is the what is the term? Um planned obsolescence. <laughs> you know, that's what they describe where you make a product that um that breaks over time. Like for the most part, cars are built like that. It's designed I don't know if they so much do it now, but they used to design on a break over time so you had to go buy new ones. Or get the new model. So, but these individuals here uh, in this lab have found a way to turn off that mechanism that is inhibiting the newer B cells from being um, created. I'm hesitant because I'm. Ch- I don't want to just. I don't want to say anything wrong. Yeah, I found it, but this year they took a discovery another step, figured out a way to override the system. We found specific hormonal signals produced by the old B cells, the memory cells that inhibit the bone marrow from producing new B cells. It was a huge discovery, like finding a needle in a haystack. So the plan over time is to inhibit these hormones and get the bone marrow to produce new B cells. Point of this, and what I want you guys to think of, is that they we are finding ways that are going to reverse aging. So that take and, and how how... How valuable is that, do you think? The information and technology that will slow down, uh, reduce the progression of aging, start to stall aging, start to reverse aging. How much is that worth? And I say, and a lot of people think, Way more than the internet, you would imagine, or transportation, or anything you can imagine at this point. What would be more valuable to human beings than to be healthier, live longer, and and just have the healthier live longer is is the main selling point. If we don't kill ourselves first, China notifies new rules to regulate foreign ships in its waters. And you, you know where this is going. China has, according to other nations, and they may see differently, you know, you got to be respectful that people can have their different sides. You may not have to agree with their different sides or you can think their sides are nuts, but just not listening and not trying to understand what their point is is pointless. You don't, you know, even if you can say, okay, then they're just, you know, going to try to lie to us or, or, or think we stupid or their delusion or whatever it is, you have to under, you know, that's, that's Sun Tzu, one of the rules of Sun Tzu. Know yourself, know your opponents. You will lose no battles. In a bid to regulate foreign ships, China on Sunday notified new maritime rules warranting vessels carrying radioactive materials, bulk oil, chemicals, and a host of other supplies to report the details of the cargoes upon. Um, excuse me, uh, excuse me, Mr. Uh, Mr. Chinese Coast Guard, uh, Captain. Excuse me, Captain of Chinese Coast Guard. Sir, I have this. Ballistic class submarine with 34 Triton missiles uh, that we're going to come into your waters. And we also have some, you know, uh, 17 torpedoes and 20, uh, uh, 68 personnel. Uh, uh, you wouldn't have known, but we, we just wanted to uh, declare ourselves that we are coming into your water. According to a notice from China's maritime safety authorities issued over the weekend, operators of submersibles, nuclear vessels, ships carrying radioactive materials and, and ships carrying bulk oil, chemicals, liquefied gas and other toxic and harmful substances are required to report their detailed information upon their visits to Chinese territorial waters. 
Yeah, um, they got mad because the other day the United States sailed some destroyers, two naval ships through the Taiwan Strait. On Friday, the Chinese Defense Ministry termed as provocative the crossing of two naval ships through the Taiwan Strait. And what the U.S. Pacific Fleet described as a routine operation. I hope that loud noise I didn't make didn't hurt anyone's ears if anyone is using earphones. So, you know, in in in. in Say what you want to say about your boy Biden, but this was the eighth time U.S. naval ships passed through the channel after Biden became the president. I mean, every president. I'm just joking. The frequent provocative moves, the passage of American vessels, are of a very bad nature and show the U.S. is the biggest destroyer of peace and stability. I mean, come on. Do you, it's, it's probably lost the translation, but they, they <laughs> you know, they... The biggest bank of security risk are on the Taiwan Strait, Chinese Defense Minister Spokesman Tan Kafi said. U.S. Navy and Air Force also conduct such missions in the disputed South China Sea to assert freedom of navigation, challenging China's claim over sovereignty over the area. So China is, has declared that anybody rolling their waters, their waters, quote unquote, which is a lot of disputed territory. Is now, you know, hey, don't, especially if you have nuclear materials like your aircraft carriers and your submersibles and your destroyers with your, all your oils, bulk oil and chemicals. We're not going to notify them when we go through areas that we feel that the United States feel or other countries. We talked about how Germany sent ships over there and I believe there were three aircraft carriers off the coast of japan which was two american one british because the hms queen elizabeth two i believe queen elizabeth two uh were over there so i believe the western countries nato alliance i'm not exactly sure how that has to do with the north atlantic treaty organization but will continue to display their sense of freedom in those waters and hopefully god willing it doesn't lead to any type of engagement which causes a bigger scale conflict you know hopefully cooler heads prevail and at the end of the day like i said i don't understand what they these let's just call it what it is clowns get out of any of this because we can all be finding better ways to make ourselves happier and more at peace but who am i with that said, I love you. You love yourself. God loves us. And that's all that matters.